Right, um, I got asked um, for a short vid on my uh, test meters I carry. Um, this is my high quality um, case. I think I paid about £20 for it probably 10 years ago now, maybe. So it's a bit, a bit worse for wear. I don't know how much longer it's going to last, but. I suppose the good thing is it doesn't look anything special either. Um, this is my highly organised um, meter case. Right. For the first thing I've got a uh, thermometer. Um, uses these uh, K-type um, probes. I've got an air temp probe. Um, pipe clamp, pipe clamp probe. Um, there's little sensors in there. It's not that accurate, but it's it's better than nothing. I've got another one. I got first, which is um, the sensor there. This is Velcro. You can Velcro around there, any size pipe or around a, or anything you like, really. Alright, and then we've got a uh, waterproof probe. So, quite often I use that one for testing milk temperatures or something. Or you can poke it in under the insulation round by the fire on the expansion valve. Just leave it in there for five, ten minutes and it'll you know stabilize and read the same temperature. Um, see how hot it is in the shed today. It seems quite cool. We just had a bit of rain. Uh, 19 degrees C. Oh, 66 for those for the Fahrenheit scale. Um, yeah, it's not a bad little meter, it's got decimal point, um, maximum, I don't ever use that really, hold, that's handy, if you're taking a temperature where you can't read it, you can press the data hold, and then, uh, I don't know if it will, it doesn't matter if that warms up or cools down, it stay, stays frozen, um, we've got a soldering iron, Cheapy. Um, actually, runs off 12 volts. I was going to get a mains one, and I figured I've always got 12 volts. So whether it's the battery on the truck or my um, power tools, these little 12 volt Makita batteries. So I've always got 12. I mean, you can put it on 14 volt. It's not going to care really. Something like that. And I've got a little um, transformer for those uh, halogen downlighters. Um, you know, the little round bulb is about 50 watts, and that's big enough to run that. So if I want to run it off mains, I can run it off 24 volt AC. It, it, it works okay on that. Um, this is my two pounds, my little micron gauge. Does the job. Um, Again, you've got a uh, voltage uh, frequency, there's frequency as well, which is you can. I suppose if you've got a variable speed drive like an inverse, you can measure what it was putting out. Um, capacitance, um, diode test, and uh, resistance. Hold function again. If you press and hold that, it's got a backlight, and then you can press the hold again, and it turns the hold function off. Temperature, 
degrees C or Fahrenheit or amp, 3 amp ranges, just DC and AC amps. Um, that's from something else. I think the temperature probe for this is in here. There we go. Yeah, so you've got an adapter, uses them. K type probes again, so I could probably plug a lot of these ones in. Well, not that soldering iron. <laughs> these ones. Could probably work with that. Right, let's have a tidy up. Right, I've got a little plug in tester. Just plugs in a um, standard UK three pin socket. That's your earth pin. Uh, that's your live and that's your neutral. And if they're all wired up correctly, you'll get three lights. And depending on what doesn't light up, um, tells you whether you've got live and earth, you know, whatever faults you've got on there. So that's a handy little plug in tester. Leads left over from some old meters that I've got rid of. Desoldering gun. I hit the solder up and uh, press the little button. And the plunger fires up and it sucks the solder up the little tube. A gas pad sold on the but it's run out of gas. That's a interesting little gadget. It's a um, inverter checker for um, mini splits. You put the um, three connections to your compressor on them three pins, and these little LEDs should light up in a sequence. Um, I think they light up in pairs. And that'll tell you if all the uh, uh, thingies, I don't know what they are, diodes or whatever in the inverter circuit is powering up the compressor properly. Um, it should, I mean, on the LG one, when we, this is a giveaway on it, when you go on the LG course, um, it does five little bursts of trying to start the compressor, and if it doesn't start, it locks out. But I'm sure there's videos of. Uh, these things work. I'll have to get one of this working one day so you can see what it does. It's a simple little thing. So that's that. And this is my latest little purchase. Uh, my old multimeter was rubbish. I didn't really have a lot of faith in it. Six. Got this extra. It's a little, mega. It's a little Connie going mad in the background. Um, so it's got magnetic hook, and then you've got a uh, another one you could hook it on like that. Or being Velcro, you can undo the loop and Velcro it round something like that if you. You had that sort of uh, it's got backlight on it as well. I haven't actually used this much, so it's still got the uh, screen protector on it. But you've got volts AC, volts DC, millivolts, ohms, continuity, capacitance, temperature, microamps, and apparently this is handy. I think for doing your um, is it flame sensors, um, but we don't do them over here. On, on AC, that's more your, um, that'd be a plumber's uh, department doing anything with uh, flammable gases, any boiler, boilers or stuff like that. So it's quite a, quite pleased with that so far. Um, that marks my general little tester. Two probes in there, that one. In like that. Um, the other one is free. You need to test across things uh, like that. Your arms aren't long enough. 
Um, for this next, there's two. What you're working on is um, further apart. You can leave that like that, and then just just take the two leads off. So that's not a bad little um, diagnostic tester before you break up the meter. That lives in my lives in my little pouch. Um, so I've just bought this. I have two little handheld testers like that, and I like to keep. Um, I like to have two ways of doing anything. So if one packs up, you can still get the job done. Last thing you want to be miles away from anywhere. And then for the second, one, fifty pound tester. You know, you can't finish or something, or you, you spend an hour trying to track down a fault because you can't test something easily. Uh, well, this is my new one. Um, it's got a built in torch. So if you're looking in the electrical box, you can see where you're pointing it. Um, there's volts, ohms, and does capacitance, which will be handy. Um, but again, it's quite new. I haven't quite got the height. You know, I don't know if we'll pick anything up on the battery because it's quite um, it's a dead and thing. Oh, there we go. Eight volts. I always used to have these um, Steinle. I think they are. Tested years ago when our local refrigeration wholesalers used to stock them. So they went to doing their own brand ones and they weren't that good. But uh, yeah, I like that. I'll get used to having a little display on there so you know exactly what you're um, up against. Alright, let's give this a try. Let's say that's five microfarads, and that is actually a five microfarad capacitor. Right, let's try. Should have plugged this in first. Let's try the old fluke on there. Four point nine five. So it seems to be pretty accurate compared to that. So that's, this one's got another. Fluke's got another decimal place. But for being your little um, tool pouch or something in your pocket, it's a handy tester, I think. So uh, comes with a little case as well. So and it, you know, keep it tidy. And that's a five microfarad. Um, Ducati, made in Europe. I think they're made in Italy. I've been buying these from RS. Yeah, made in Italy. Not really, um, quite reasonably priced, and they're um, they seem to last quite well. And finally, a little fault stick, which we're all, all familiar with. Just run it along a. Wire and it'll beep at you when it gets to uh, somewhere live. I mean, they're good for fault finding, you know, breaking a cable or something, or you know, holding it on the cable to a motor and then waiting to see if it powers up when the relay should click in. But I wouldn't rely on testing to see if something was live with one of these before I worked on it. Um, you know, 99% of the time it might work fine, but there's going to be that 1% of the time when you you're just slightly out of range or especially on a flex if you've got a multi-core cable like this that's got three strands in it and you're, you're testing it where the earth wire is and the lives around the back you might think it's dead and you know that might be the last thing you know so uh, I'd always test the terminals with a proper tester um, before working on anything and really you want to test it on a known live 
first, test what you're testing, and then test it on a known live again because you know you need to make sure your meter's working. Um, that's about it really for that lot. I've got my mega, but I don't keep that in this in this box.